Hey, it's Kevin from JJ Hat Center. We're going to talk a little bit today about um, how to clean your hat. Now, there are ways that you can clean your felt hats yourself. As long as the, uh, the dirt or the substance is coming from outside, fingerprints, bird poop, uh, newspaper print, whatever, splashing from a, uh, a car or auto or, you know, those things might come out. Um, Things that come from the inside, like when you sweat through a hat, that does not come out. Uh, there's no way. So prevention is the only thing to prevent that. You know, like changing your band, putting in a sweat pad inside, um, changing your lining, changing your sweat bands, your leather sweat, all those things, changing this, that keeps the hat going and stuff. But um, we're talking about outside stuff, like, you know, a little stain here on the brim where something falls on your hat. You can get these things out, uh, not always, but uh, if you bring it to me, I generally can do those things, and I do it for free. So, uh, let me try to sing another song I've never sang before. I'm gonna bring this in a little closer here. And, uh, I'll try this one. I I've never really sang this, but it it's a nice song, though. You know? You see, never smiles. Broken heart, father gone. Mother tried. So is all alone. Take the pain away. 
I know I could do better. That's a good song, and I think I could do a little bit of job, better job at it. But uh, we we we'll keep it. We're not going to delete it. I think uh, there there was a little bit of merit there, so uh, we'll we'll keep it. Um, generally, I do a song and it comes out like that, and I just kind of rewind it and we start again. But today, I, I don't think I have the energy to start again. So um, let's talk about cleaning your hats and stuff. Now, cleaning the hat is kind of a um, it's essentially buffing it. So when you get your felt, um, all right, let me take it out of their hat here. It's a tradition. I always keep them off screen. Nobody tell me to keep them on the screen. It's just like my thing. I like to go off screen and get it. Okay. Um, you have a stain somewhere. The best thing you could do is buff it out. Now, buffing is essentially taking a piece of sandpaper and sanding out the top layer of felt. But it's not that simple. It has to be done the right way. Um, if you take it and you just rub it, you're gonna just have a little hole instead of the little stain. You're gonna have a little hole and a stain at the same time, so it looks worse. So it's a very, very, I'm telling you the truth, there's a very good chance that by doing this, you're gonna make your stain worse. So you have to, sometimes you have to take a test. You have to see like how deep it is. You have to just take a look, you know. Um, what I like to do sometimes is I test things on the underside, you know. I try to see if I could do a little test somewhere on an inconspicuous side. Uh, the best sanding paper is, I generally take, um, there are these little blocks, these disposable sanding blocks that you could buy. So it's got a flat surface, completely flat. You put the sand, you put the uh, thing you want to sand on a flat surface, like a table or whatever, and you use the sanding block. So everything's flat and even. You're not making like little divots and lines. It's long, big, big surfaces. Um, there are these disposable sanding blocks. You could probably get them in Home Depot. The ones we have are pink, they're kind of a reddish pink color. They're about the size of a kitchen sponge. Um, one side is flat, the other has kind of like bumps on it but it's a disposable sanding block on a piece of rubber. It's like foam. So the foam, yes, it's flat, but there's a certain flexibility to it. Um, these things are great. They're, they work better than little pieces of sandpaper. They work better than anything. <coughs> Excuse me. If you don't have that, you find yourself some sandpaper, it'll work, but it won't work as good. It's just not as even. The technique is the most important thing. Get some sandpaper and just make little pieces, you know, like an inch or two inches, whatever. Um, it can be as fine as you want. It could be very fine. It could be super fine. It could be fine. Um, you could even use medium. It depends. I'm going to say somewhere around fine is okay. It doesn't have to be a particular type of sandpaper. But um, if it's not working, you could go a little bit heavier, you know. Something like fine sandpaper is fine. You don't have to go super, super, super fine and stuff where it's not going to do much at all. Um, feather it. So, like, let's say, okay, this... Uh, Let's say this knuckle right here is the stain, okay? So instead of rubbing it right there on the stain, you're gonna take evenly and you're gonna do everything. The whole area gets sanded. The clean part too, with the dirty part. See that, that there is the stain. This is not dirty, so you just go over everything evenly. 
You can even, as you cover, as you reach this part where the stain is, apply a little bit more pressure. So you, you just sort of like, you're hitting a little harder in that area, you know? Soft hard, soft hard, soft hard. Or just even this one. The idea is very even. You're using the block, the sanding block makes it evener and light. So you're going light, applying a little more pressure each time. Sand it out, blow it away, blow off the dust, keep going. Keep going, going, going. If you're getting any progress, go further. If it doesn't seem like anything's working, eh, you could give up. Uh, I'm gonna say it works most of the time, unless it's a super deep stain, like a puddle of, you know, like salty, snowy water can go very deep. Sometimes that salty water stains from like getting splashed from a car or something, that won't come out because it's deep. If it's something on the surface, like I said, like fingerprints and stuff, it'll sand right off. I guarantee you'll have no issues. You could use any sandpaper you want from rough to medium to fine to super fine, whatever you want, it'll work. It's all about the technique. If you want my advice, the best thing to do is to get the disposable sanding blocks. Like I said, they're a little bit foamy sponge. Uh, the ones I get are about this big. They're kind of like a pinkish red color, and they're awesome. Um, you probably Amazon it too, I'm sure. It doesn't matter so much what kind of paper they are. It matters more that you're very slow and careful and you do it, do it like an artist. Don't press real hard and stuff. Just feather it, just barely touching, you know? Barely touching and increase a little bit. That's it. Done. After that, you can get, then you move on to the super fan, fine sandpaper the same way. Do it flat, feather the whole area super fine to clean it up, to get rid of any bumps or, you know. And after that, you could go to something like a, uh, a foam sponge. They make these foam sponges or a hat brush. You just basically get to go finer and finer and finer until you get to like a soft, you know, horsehair brush. And that's it. Um, you're essentially always going counterclockwise on the top of a hat if you're brushing counterclockwise. So you just want to smooth everything out. So that's it. Um, I wish I could do it from here. I don't really have a stained hat, nor do I have any sandpaper, I don't think, either. But um, it's not a terribly hard thing to do, like I said. Um, you find yourself your stain, you get it flat on the table, use your flat block, and the whole area, if the stain is there, you're going everywhere. Remember, not a little hole, you want to make a little divot everywhere, and you're just going soft, you're feathering it. Feather just the top. That's it. I've seen some people get um, results with pencil erasers, like if you have a, a ballpoint pen or pencil or anything like that, a good pencil eraser works. You have to test it first on paper, because some erasers make it worse. They just make pink stains on your hat. The white erasers, the good gum erasers that come in like you know, the big square things you buy from school, those are good. Test it out on paper first, clean it, make sure it's a clean eraser and it's not leaving like residue, it works good, then switch to there. Go over the pen mark, bam, 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 erase it, erase it, and go back with some sandpaper. Go through that whole thing, and softer sandpaper. But it's not that hard to do. Now stains that are around here, anywhere here, here, you just cut off the band, put a wider band over it. These are sweat stains. That's the idea. If you have a thin band, so let's say a straddle liner, and that's your band, like right here, if you get a stain anywhere here, 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 you just rip the band off and put a wider band, so just cover it. Uh, don't worry about trying to get that stain out, because remember, anything that comes from inside the hat, it will not come out, um, which is why prevention is so important. You're using a good leather sweat band, sweat pads inside, the ones we sell for five bucks. You can get them anywhere on Amazon, da, da, da. Um, and also changing your lining, your leather, leather sweatbands, outside, all that stuff, those bands are going to make your hat last longer, um, in theory. Now, most people don't change this band enough. They don't change the sweatbands ever, and they usually don't even know that linings are replaceable. Linings are like $10, the silk linings, they pop out. The idea is when they get stinky and dirty, you throw it out, you put a new one in for 10 bucks, and the hat lives on. So these are the parts that make contact with the body are basically the lining, the leather sweatband, and this outer bands. These are the parts that are catching the sweat, they're touching 
the felt up here is not touching your head really here it's not touching sometimes right here in the middle which is why there's a lining and on some hats they even have tip stickers on a, uh, a straw hat they don't do linings because it's it defeats the purpose of using a breathable organic material like uh, whatever cotton or straw or linen or raffy whatever those are breathable materials so if they put a lining inside it that's like satin it's man-made like a crap so it's not going to breathe it's going to make your hat too hot so rather than that the one spot right here that touches the head just the middle they take a sticker they put it right in the middle of the panama a little sticker it's called the tip sticker what that does is it keeps the sweat from touching the hat and it also keeps the little frayed edges, the rough edges on the inside of a Panama from scratching your head if you're a bald head guy. It covers up those little sharp points. So yeah, instead of an entire lining, that's what they do. There are also companies that do better ones that they, they do like a big tip sticker this big that's made out of a mini silk lining covered in plastic, like uh, plastic cellophane. That's something you used to see in, you know, vintage hats. Tessie is still doing it. It's one of the few brands that does it. Tessie from Italy. And some of the very, very fine hat companies do that in their straws, but very few. It's, uh, it's more of a vintage thing you don't see anymore. But yeah, tip stickers work. If you get sweat stains up here, just take a sticker, a regular sticker. Anything, you know, if you got a pad of sticker paper you got from Staples, just cut a circle or something. Write uh, reward it found. Put your phone number in there and your name. Um, stick it inside the hat right there. So the idea is it keeps your hat from getting sweat stains on the top. And if you do find a good Samaritan, a good Samaritan that actually finds your hat, if you lose it, he can get it back to you. So that's another thing. Put your business card inside your hat, like in, you know, tuck it into the. Uh, the sweatbands, you know, there's a place right here you stick your business card in, or make a tip sticker and write your name in it. Um, a lot of people leave tax, leave them in taxis, leave them here, leave them there, restaurants, and people will find it, and they don't want to steal it, they want to get it back to you, but they can't. It's just like a hat, you know, how do they find you? So what you do is put your, your info in there. Reward if found, you could say that, you know, give the guy a 20 spot if he you know finds it i think it's worth it uh, for your favorite hat right uh, reward if found phone number put your business card there or something that way you don't get your personal uh, phone number in there or put your cell phone or your business number or something just write a reward and your hat will come back it does i got a hat back once actually um was it a hat it was a wallet and a hat yeah i left my wallet and I left the hat inside a taxi, and the guy called me at my job the next day. It was awesome. The guy was so cool. And I, I remember I gave him money, too. I think I gave him a 20. Most likely, because I'm a cheapskate, you know? I wouldn't give him more than that. So, all right. Cleaning your hat basically comes down to that. You use sandpaper. you got to have good technique. It's what it's all about. There's not a lot more for me to say. Look at the purple pick guard. Isn't it cool? This is actually just a prototype. The guy is uh, cutting me the real one right now. This one's going back. It wasn't perfectly cut, but uh, I'm gonna get another one too. You know, I have two guitars like this, so I got the purple one. I'm trying to think what color I should make the next one purple. Maybe orange or something? Or, I don't know, I'm not sure. Something wild looking. Maybe another purple, that might be cool. Anyway, I'm gonna play you guys out. That's it, I played you yeah, up, bye. No, just kidding. Thank you.
Thank mm -hmm. you.